What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and have you ever wondered what would happen if you combine the amazing dynamic range you get with S-Log3 with the fantastic colour science you get with s -Cinetone? Well, I have and that's what I want to check out in this video. I'll test this thoroughly and I'll give you my conclusions and tips and if your camera doesn't have s -Cinetone, don't worry, I'll cater for you also. It's time for me to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video I've popped in the description box below. And of course, this isn't sponsored content, so be sure to show some love for the channel by hitting that notification bell next to your sub button. That just means the world to me, it makes a big difference to the channel, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Over the years, I've done so much testing around S-Log3, and so I've had a fair bit of experience around it. And it occurs to me that the main problem that people have is not dealing with the extreme dynamic range, but it's actually in dealing with the very big color space that you often pair with S-Log3, like s Gamut 3 Cine or s Gamut 3 So the question is, what happens if you take the color side of things out of the equation and you use a smaller color space like s Cinetone? First thing I want to do straight away is check out what happens with skin tones. So here we have S-Log3 and s Gamut 3 Cine color space looking typically flat and fairly desaturated. And I want to add a lookup table to get it looking normal. So I'm going to add the Phantom Lutz neutral lookup table, which is such a good pick for natural looking skin tones and punchy color. After all, they're modeled on the ARRI color science. So this looks really good to me already. Now I want to see what happens when we use s Cinetone color space. And this is S-Log3 with s Cinetone color space. Already I can tell it looks much more saturated in the colors. In theory, because we're using a small color space, we should just be able to correct for the S-Log3 gamma curve by adding a deep contrast curve, which didn't work when I tried it. So I decided to add a load of saturation and actually it looked pretty good. And this got me wondering what this would look like compared to normal s Cinetone mode. And then here you can see them all side by side and there's some really obvious colour differences happening. But you know, I like them all. Of course this is all subjective. Personally I prefer the skin tones on both of the S-Log3 clips. The regular s Cinetone I find just a touch more sort of yellowy, pinky on the skin tones, whereas the other two I find just more flattering in general. So it occurred to me that using S-Log3 for your gamma and using s Cinetone for your colour space might lead to a bit of a dilemma. Usually when you use S-Log3 you'd want to decode that big log curve and colour space with a lookup table. Lookup tables that are usually designed with s Gamut 3 Cine in mind. s Gamut 3 Cine is still considered a very large colour space but it tends to give more flattering skin tones particularly when compared to s Gamut which is an even bigger colour space and that leans much more into the green area. I tried hard but I couldn't actually find a graphic of the s Cinetone colour space. However, it's said to be a similar size to S709 or basically Rec709. So potentially we have the problem of applying a lookup table to your S-Log3 s Cinetone footage and you might get quite odd results just because the LUTs are not designed for that colour space. I'm definitely going to check that out, but next I want to see what happens when we shoot a landscape. So here we have S-Log3 and s Gamut 3 Cine colour space, and I have to apologise straight away. When I went to film this, it was absolutely howling. Plus, I'm using a longer focal length, so it was tricky. I wanted to capture some natural tones, so when I applied the Alistair Chapman Venice lookup tables, it looked like this, which is very true to what I was seeing on the day, but as there was so little contrast, I decided to give it a bit more, and then it looked like this. That's the gorgeous UK weather for you. Right now, let's try the same shot, but with s Cinetone as the colour space. So it's really hard to tell any difference without applying the same lookup table. So let's do that now. I'm going to apply the same lookup table and contrast adjustment. So here it is. And to me, this looks slightly more saturated, but in terms of the colors, they look remarkably similar to S Gamut 3 Cine. This is much more obvious when we look at them side by side. You can plainly see the extra saturation, but the colors really similar. Moving on now, because looking at this is making me queasy. Next, I want to see what happens when you apply a lookup table that's designed for s Gamut 3 Cine to this new S-Log3 s Cinetone hybrid. This is our control test. This is s Gamut 3 Cine. Again, I'm going to use the Alistair Chapman Venice lookup tables, which are really great conversion lookup tables. 
And when I do, this is what it looks like. You get really good contrast, punchy primary colors. Oh, and did I mention they're free? I'll link them below for you. Moving on now, and we have S-Log3 with s in its own color. It's hard to tell any difference at this stage, so let's go ahead and add the same lookup table. And to me, this definitely looks more saturated again. Just take a look at the woman on the left's jumper. To me, that is far too saturated. However, one thing I noticed is just how lovely the skin tones look despite that extra saturation. I kind of thought they might end up looking too magenta or too orange, but no, they look great. Looking at them side by side, I have to give it to S Gamut 3 Cine for colour accuracy. Everything in this image looks so much more true to life. If I pull the saturation down on the S Cinetone clip, I can get things much closer, but the colours are still not quite right. Don't get me wrong, it still looks really good, it's completely acceptable, but that's kind of the problem with smaller colour spaces. You always have less wiggle room if you need to manipulate the colours. If you're using a Sony camera that doesn't have S Cinetone, not to worry. A little while ago, Paul from the YouTube channel Extra Shot created an s Cinetone match, and it's pretty damn good. So of course, I wondered what it looks like with his match and S-Log3 as the Gamma. He's created two versions, one for the A7S3 and one for the A7 III. I'll be using the one for the A7S3. I'll link those videos below so you can check them out. So let's see how it looks. So again, here's our blustery shot of S-Log3 and s Cinetone. And as I said, this is pretty true to what I was seeing at the time. And then here's extra shots, s Cinetone match, but with the gamma changed to S-Log3. And yes, I know what you're thinking. It looks a bit odd right now, and that's just because I've added the same lookup table to both. Using a small color space really does affect our saturation, but when I dial it back, it looks like this. All of a sudden, things are starting to look really similar. And you can see this when we look at them side by side, so if your Sony camera doesn't have s Cinetone, never fear, try this. Right now it's time to draw some conclusions and put together a little doggy bag of tips for you to take away. And the main question is, does it work? And yes, it absolutely does. It's s Cinetone, but with ridiculous dynamic range. Some may say it defeats the point of s Cinetone, which people love for a fast workflow linear gamma. If so, no problem, just don't use it. Of course, I do have some more tips and conclusions. Firstly, I really like the skin tones from s Cinetone. The only thing I notice is occasionally they look a touch magenta. I also love the accuracy of colour and flexibility you get with s Gamut 3 Cine. This makes it really hard to choose which to pick. One bit of advice I would give is if you are going to try this, make sure the saturation is set to zero or lower in your picture profile menu. Also, I would pay more attention to your white balance. If anything, just do a custom white balance when using s Cinetone. It's less flexible and it's harder to tweak those colours because of that small colour space. There are a couple of things you can do when grading this footage. You can either add a lookup table and then back off some of the saturation, or you can add your own contrast curve and add the required saturation you need. But what about the extra shot hybrid profile with the S-Log3? Well, I know initially it didn't look good, it didn't take a lookup table very well, but then as soon as you back off the saturation, I thought it looked pretty good. So if you're using a Sony camera that doesn't have s Cinetone, I definitely recommend trying this. Why not do some test shots? You never know, you might absolutely love it. So there you go, what do you think? Are you gonna be using s Cinetone with S-Log3? After all the testing, I'm still kind of on the fence. I like the bold primary colours and skin tones you get with s Cinetone, but then I miss the flexibility you get with s Gamut 3 Cine. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about this if you want to in the comments section below. I'm down there as much as I can be. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography in which YouTubers handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. I'll see you guys. The chains you bring